Well, hello everyone. I have a question for you today. Are you washing your feet? Are you washing your feet every day? And you might be wondering, what am I talking about? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God, right here in beautiful Honolulu, near world famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, September 16th, and I'm excited. I'm excited, friends. I'm super excited because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of September that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right. That's right, friends. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today we're looking at 1 John 1, 9. Well, let's think about that question. Are you washing your feet every day? I live in Hawaii, and the custom here is to wear slippers. In the mainland, you call them flip-flops, but here in Hawaii, we call them slippers. Not slippers, but slippers, S-L-I-P-P-A-H-S. -S I wear them almost all the time. In fact, the only time I wear shoes is on Sunday morning for our Sunday worship service. Well, what that means is this, wearing slippers most of the time here in Hawaii, combined with our red Hawaiian dirt, means at the end of the day, my feet are dirty. Before I get into bed every night, I have to wash my feet clean in, in the tub with wash them clean and not some nights not most nights every night if i don't our clean sheets will start looking ver very dirty especially the area by my feet and you might be wondering what has this got to do with anything well on the night before jesus was arrested he shared a last meal with his 12 disciples you can read about it in the gospel of john chapter 13. Jesus had some very important lessons to share with his disciples, and one of them was about humility. See, the custom at that time was that before a meal, a servant would wash everyone's feet. So they're walking around, they're getting dirty, just like here in Hawaii. They have sandals, they don't have shoes, and the, the roads are dusty and dirty. And, and there was no servant that night, and the 12 disciples were too busy jockeying for positions of power and influence. They want to be ready for the kingdom, you know, that they think is going to be theirs here on earth and wash everyone's feet. Are you kidding? There's no way I'm going to do that. They're all thinking. So Jesus, their master, their Lord, got down on his knees with a basin of water and began to wash their feet. Well, what was the disciples' reaction to all that? Oh, this is nice. My feet are really dirty and this cool water feels great. I'm so glad you're doing this, Jesus. Is that what they're thinking? No. They're all humiliated that their teacher, their master, would humble himself. He would get down in front of them on his knees and serve them by washing their feet. Well, one of them was even more so. His name was Peter, and Peter, of course, was the most humiliated of all the disciples. There was no way that Jesus was going to wash his feet. It was just too embarrassing. So Peter said to Jesus, no, you shall never wash my feet. And by the way, side note, imagine saying no to your master and Lord. That doesn't make sense, even when we do it today. We need to say yes to our master. Well, what was Jesus' reply to Peter's no? Hey, no problem, Peter, I'll just go on to the next guy. No, Jesus was emphatic. Unless I wash you, Peter, you have no part with me. Well, what is Peter going to say to that? Peter is an all or nothing kind of guy, so he goes from nothing, you can't wash any part of me, to all. Instead of refusing to have his feet washed, he now begs Jesus for a bath. Not just my feet, Lord, but my, my hands and my head as well. Well, that wasn't going to happen either. Jesus explained, and this is important, a person who's had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. Now, Jesus is not talking here about personal hygiene. He is referring to Christian living. He's, refer he's referring to what Bible students call sanctification. Well, sanctification is a long word with a simple meaning. It means to make holy, to set apart as sacred, to purify or free from sin. So that bath that Jesus was talking about refers to your initial moment of salvation. You're overcome by your sin and your shame, your utter helplessness. You're overcome by that. You recognize that. When Jesus died on the cross, he took your place of judgment. He took your place of shame and disgrace. He took your place of punishment. And when you give your life to Jesus, friends, at that moment, at that moment, you cross from death to life. You go from being an outcast to becoming a son, a daughter of God. You're washed clean. You're washed clean by the blood of Jesus. 
You are a new creation, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The old is gone, the new has come. So this is important, friends. When you're in Christ, you don't need a bath anymore. You don't need a bath anymore. In other words, you don't need to get saved over and over and over. Can you lose your salvation? Yeah, you can lose your salvation. You can turn away from God. You can reject him, but that is a study for another day. The good news here is when you're in Christ, he has great keeping power over you. So you don't need another bath, but what do you need? You need to get your feet washed. You need to get your feet washed. How often? As often as you need it. Every day? No doubt about that. Maybe every hour. Make sure to wash your feet when they need washing. So the question we need to ask is, how do we wash your feet? How do you wash your feet, friends? You confess your sin. You repent of your sin. You ask Jesus to cleanse you of your sin and make you clean again, make you brand new again. And that's where 1 John 1, 9 comes in. What a beautiful passage. Let's look at that passage. 1 John 1, 9, I'm going to start with verse 5. 1 John 1, verse 5 through 9. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But, verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8 and 9, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And here's verse 9, friends. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a promise, friends. What an assurance. Now let's think about that scripture verse. Let's unwrap it. If we confess our sins. So the first step is what? Confess. Take the initiative. Friends, take the initiative. Don't wait. When you sin, don't try to excuse your sin. Don't try to ignore your sin. Don't try to overlook it. Uh, well, it's just a little mistake. Don't try to rationalize it. Well, I'm only human. You know, everybody does that. Everybody makes a mistake. Makes a mistake. You know, sin is like a sore. The longer you wait to treat it, the worse it'll become. The poison will begin to fester. It doesn't get any better by ignoring it. It only gets worse. So the first thing to do is confess your sin, take the initiative, don't wait. The second important part of this passage is when we confess our sins, friends, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You can trust him. God is faithful. God is just. He will forgive. There is no waiting period, friends. There is no probation time. Did you hear that? There's no waiting period. There's no probation time. He immediately forgives your sin. He doesn't hold it over your head saying, hey, look what you did. I can't believe what you did. You better do a whole lot better next time. No. He doesn't say that. He forgives your sin immediately, and he forgives it completely. He casts your sin into the sea of forgetfulness. He puts up a sign that says, no fishing. <laughs> I love that. In other words, don't go back and try to retrieve your sins. Jesus says your sins are gone. Your past is gone. The same tries to get you to take your sins back again. He doesn't want you to let go of them, but he's the accuser, friends. He is your accuser. He is a liar. He's a deceiver. Don't listen to what he said. There is no truth there. There's no truth in what he says. He mixes lies all the way through. If we confess our sins... He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. What else does it say in 1 John 1, 9? That he cleanses us, that he purifies us from how much sin? Cleanses us from how much sin? Most of our sin? Everything except one or two particularly vile sins? No. He cleanses us from all sin. Every sin you've ever committed, the ones in your past, the ones you're now confessing when you repent. Now you must turn away from sin. Don't wallow in your sin. Don't wallow in your sin like a pig in the mud. When you repent, 
of your sin. When you confess your sin, Jesus cleanses you from all sin. Friends, they are gone. Your sin is gone. Your sinful past is gone. Remember, you're a new creation in Jesus Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. What a miracle. It is the greatest miracle ever. So my question for you today is, are you washing your feet every day? Are you washing your feet whenever you need it, whenever your feet get dirty? Friends, you don't have to work to earn your salvation. You don't, you don't have to try to do it yourself. You don't have to prove to God that you deserve His grace and mercy. Your works, your efforts, your performance will never be enough. All we can do is insufficient. It's inadequate with capital I. But the good news, friends, the good news is all we have to do is confess our sin, repent of our sin, turn away from our sin, ask God to cleanse us of our sin. And the miracle, friends, the miracle of miracles, he said he will do it. He's faithful and just. Forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, isn't that beautiful, friends? That is powerful. That can be life-changing for you. That can be life-changing for you. Wash your feet every day. Wash your feet whenever they need cleansing. Don't wait. Don't excuse your sin. Don't ignore it. Don't try to overlook it. Don't let sin fester in your life. Don't try to rationalize it. Like I said, Hey, I'm only human. Everybody does it. You know, it's no big deal. Don't try to do that. Immediately confess your sin. Give it to Jesus. Say to him, Lord, I need your help. I give this to you. Cleanse me. And he will do it. Now help me out, friends. When have you forgotten this truth? When have you let sin fester in your heart, in your life? When have you allowed it? Sin to poison your heart. And what? Or probably, more importantly, who helped you remember? Please leave a comment. I really want to hear from you. And please let me know how you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave a message, whether it's at our website, honoluluag.org. It's looking really great. Go there if you haven't been there. Our Facebook page, which is where most of you are. If not, search Honolulu AG on Facebook or our YouTube channel. Search Honolulu Assembly of God. And please, friends, please share our website and our Facebook and our YouTube resources with others so they can be encouraged also. If you've been blessed today, if you've been encouraged, inspired, if you've learned something today, been challenged by something today, would you please share that with someone else? And don't forget, remember, this Sunday service, September 20th, will be streamed live on Facebook at 10.35 a.m. I hope you can join us with that. If you can't join us in person, please do so online. And if you're not on Facebook, the uh, same service will be the same recording will be uploaded to our website and our youtube later that day probably that night well let's go to prayer now are you ready friends you ready to go to prayer let's do it let's let's pray father i thank you that you have promised that you are faithful and just and that if i confess my sin you will forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness I thank you for that wonderful promise, Lord. You are quick and faithful and available to do that, Lord. You don't let that sin hang over, our, over my head, Lord. You don't threaten me with it. You cleanse it. You wash it away. And Lord, I pray that for everyone watching, every man, woman, every young person, every boy, girl, that they might live with that wonderful cleansing every day, every hour, washing their feet, Lord. Get in their life cleansed from sin by your, by your precious cleansing and sanctification and your Holy Spirit's work. Thank you for that, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen. Friends, God bless you. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha keaku. Well, there is more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then. God bless. Aloha. We'll see you. Bye-bye.